Crabomitable is a pretty bad Pokemon. Its fighting ice type makes it weak to damn near everything, but it does have a few things going for it. At base 132 attack, the crab with the mean haircut can actually pack a punch. Actually, a pretty solid punch because of its ability Iron Fist, which boosts all punching moves by 20%. This is paired with stab options in Ice Hammer and Drain Punch, which can be boosted further with setup and bulk up if you can stay alive. With a hilarious base 43 speed, Crabomitable really needs some trick room. And if the stars align, Crabomitable goes from being laughed at to a pretty massive threat. Look, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face by an ice crab. Crabomitable is not the most popular dude, and he's also not the best dude. But I like this thing, and today I'm going to be using Crabomitable so you do not have to. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. So I'm back with some Trick Room shenanigans, and this team always makes for some really good matches. This actually turns out to be a super crazy game. So my opponent decides to lead off with the Greninja. I decide to toss out with an orange peel who says, I gotta get my orange peel ass out of here because you know, Greninja is not a great lead option for me. Plus, I wanna keep my red card intact. I can save that for potential setups, try to stir some shit up later. Plus, I have the perfect Minecraft ass elephant for the job in the Kaparaja here who comes in. I'm thick as store bought gravy, so I know I can take any attack from this thing. Plus, I'm assault vested. However, the Greninja just says, actually, go ahead and hold this. It goes for the switcheroo, gives me a choice specs, takes my assault vest, and a choice specs. Kaparaja is not really going to be super ideal here, though the good news is I can at least go for a heavy slam. It does pretty good damage to whatever, and I'm like, well damn, I guess my boxy ass is going to be stuck wearing these goofy glasses, and Kaparaja is kind of in a pretty bad spot. However, they decide to switch into Decidueye, who actually just barely lives the heavy slam, and then is actually able to go for the low kick. And since my ability is heavy metal, I'm about heavy as hell over here. But I'm actually able to hang on with our crazy HP, and somehow we're able to finish off the Decidueye with a heavy slam. So Choice Specs Kaparaja out here doing the Lord's work, and uh, we're in a pretty decent spot. At least being able to take care of the Decidueye is nice. However, this now allows them a revenge switch into the Lucario. And obviously I'm not going to really consider saving the, the, the elephant here. I'm low health. I'm choice specs, and I really don't, uh, I don't have a lot that wants to switch into Lucario. So, I didn't want this thing to start setting up sword stances. Luckily, it does finish me off, uh, just with the drain punch there. And now, this allows me a switch into whatever I like. So, I got me a slow poke in a funny hat who is here for one reason. Well, a couple reasons, but one of them is to be able to set up the trick room. However, uh, the Lucario actually ends up going for the sword stance in the face of death, as uh, I just twist the dimensions around a bit. That's going to make me faster in pretty much everything, and my team definitely relies on having the, the speed kind of topsy-turvied around a little bit there. So, at this point, I know I'm going to be faster. However, they actually, you know, I'm not going to be faster than extreme speed. The priority is going to go first. It does allow me to at least take one attack and then go for a Scald. Uh, unfortunately, I do not get the burn, and I'm actually in a spot where I am in danger from my, the next extreme speed. Plus, I do want to ensure that I can keep the Slow King around. The thing's going to be useful for setting up the Trick Room for later, and I decide I can actually just switch into the Dawn Fan, and these are the exact types of situations why I, we save the red card, because I can come in here, they're forced to touch me, I know that I can take an attack, especially because I have Sturdy, right, so the extreme speed doesn't do a whole lot, and then I'm like, hey, actually... I'm gonna need your ass to uh, turn around and get out of here. I hold up the red card, forces a switch into a random Mon on their team, and it turns out my elephants today have been extremely unlucky against this damn frog. It randomly draws in the one guy we did not want it to, and Greninja is in a spot here where at least I know I can outspeed, set up some Stealth Rock here because that Trick Room is still up. And uh, I opt to get up that Stealth Rock there to help out the team in the back. However, this thing is just gonna go for the Ice Beam. Does turn itself into the Ice type, and that's going to be enough to take care of the Dawn fan. So, at least I was able to force out the Lucario, get up that Stealth Rock, and now I'm in a spot where I do still have one more turn of Trick Room. So, I decide to bring in Edgar's slow ass, and Crabominable is actually looking like it could potentially be a win condition if I can play around with Trick Room effectively here. So, I bring in Edgar. He's the type of fool you do not want to fuck with, and I can go for the Drain Punch here, essentially outspeeding the Greninja, uh, however, they do not want that thing to go down, and uh, Buddy's actually got Balls of Steel, decides to switch into the Garchomp. Obviously, I don't make the prediction expecting this thing to come in and go for the Ice move, uh, but a Drain Punch is going to do some solid chip there, and while I'm able to get some nice damage off on it, it does, however, now have the upper hand here being able to be faster because the dimensions are returned to normal, 
And the Crabominable is not the kind of guy who enjoys when the dimensions are normal out here. So, I do decide to switch this thing out. I know that uh, the crab is actually going to be really useful. Plus, it can be pretty sweet if I can get it to kind of have a little late game clutch here. So, I decide to bring in the Slow King. I'm figuring, you know, Slow King, I can probably come in here on an attack and potentially set up the Trick Room. Most importantly, I want to be able to get the Trick Room back up. If that means coming in on the Slow King here and sacking this thing off, and then being able to bring in Yuxi to do it later, I'm totally fine with that. However, they actually decide to go for the Terra Steel and then go for the super effective Iron Head that was on the Crab. However, slow, Smart Paul is like, hey, that's actually, that's pretty nice for me. This actually puts me in a spot where I'm feeling like I might be able to now take an Earthquake and then set back up the Trick Room, and then uh, we're in a nice little spot here. So, it's also super nice seeing them have to commit that Terrastalization, knowing that they're not going to be able to change type later. They do still have five Pokemon left, so you know there's a lot of uh, a lot of work to be done. However, they go for the Earthquake. Slow King is just barely, barely bulky enough to be able to hang on, and this allows me to set back up that Trick Room, and now the tables have turned. So, also, I apologize if my voice sounds weird. I've been fighting this sickness for a while. I feel like my voice is finally almost back to normal. Um, but uh, leave a like to make me feel better. Anyway, uh, at this point here, I know that I am faster with the Slow King. However, Slow King's in a spot where you know, I can't really kill it with Scald. I could potentially switch to get my Regenerator. I decide I'm just going to stay in, go for that Scald, and potentially get a burn. And I do not get the burn. And this does allow them to go for another Earthquake. Does finish off the Slow King, but sometimes you got to sacrifice the King to bring in the actual King, who, you know, turns out to be the crap. So. One thing about Trick Room is there's just there's never enough turns to fully maximize what you can do with it. So being able to go for the sack there is at least going to draw in Edgar, and uh, Edgar is ready to absolutely throw some hands. And uh, at this point, so listen, I have Ice Punch on this thing over Ice Hammer. Uh, that is because I've, I've been running Ice Hammer on this thing, and I've actually gotten the 10% miss more times than you'd fucking expect. So I'm back to Ice Punch for the old-fashioned, you know, ice damage. And Crabomitle, it's a hard enough mod to set up anyway. And then when you do finally get it set up and then you miss an Ice Hammer, it's it's a bad time. Regardless, I'm able to absolutely bop one right to the face of the head card chomp, takes care of it, which is amazing. And now this is going to bring in the Lucario. So we know that this thing has extreme speed, but also, you know, being at full health, I know that I can take at least one. Plus, I can drain his ass, pause, and uh, just get some health back. It turns out he actually does have the Bullet Punch for the priority stab, and also gets a critical hit. But you're not going to take care of Edgar that easy. I can then drain punch it. And down goes the Lucario. So Crabomitable is out here trying to slowly pull the game back in our favor. It's gonna be it's gonna be difficult, especially because I'm using a damn Crabomitable. But I feel like there is a way. Now they're running out of options here as they decide to switch into the Charizard. Also, this is one of the main reasons why I wanted to prioritize getting up the Stealth Rock, and that is because this thing does take that 50%. And at this point, I'm thinking, you know, I'm gonna just go for the Ice Punch. I'm faster under Trick Room. We're still just absolutely zooming here with our crazy ass crab legs. I also decide to go for the Terra Water. That's just basically insurance on if somehow this thing lives in Ice Punch and then maybe I can live like a flamethrower. I don't know. Edgar just wants a fountain on his head and he gets it. So I go for that Ice Punch. I am fast. That does kill the Charizard. And Crab is in an amazing position here. However, it kind of just halts because the freaking dimensions return to normal. And that is wildly unfortunate. What's also unfortunate is they do still have the Luxray. So first of all, this thing comes in and it doesn't show Intimidate. Now that can only mean that this thing is gonna be working with the Guts ability and it's gonna function more as a sweeper. So I decide to save the Crab for later. I actually feel like that thing can clutch it out for me in the back if I can activate the Trick Room once again. So I decide to bring in Umbreon. I'm just a, a dumb fella who takes attacks easily. And it actually turns out this thing does go for the Trailblaze. So, Trailblaze is going to give it a nice little speed boost here, and also it is going to get that Flame Orb to activate. What that's going to do is give it uh, a nice little boost to its physical attack with the Guts, and now it's likely going to be running Facade for some pretty big damage. And honestly, Luxray with a speed boost and a Guts is relatively scary. However, I am also a pretty scary Black Kitty, and I'm just bulky as hell. It allows me to take attacks. I can fire off a Throat Chop. It's not going to do, you know, a whole lot, but... Umbreon doing what it does best is just come in and just sponge attacks all damn day long out here. And at this point, it's pretty close on whether or not I can take one more. I really just need this Luxray gone. They go for one more facade, which I'm able to live with 4 HP, which is kind of crazy. And one more throat chop is actually going to finish off the Luxray there. So, 
My main goal at this point was, even if uh, Umbreon goes down, I do still have defensive Yuxi, who can likely take an attack and set up the Trick Room, so that is the goal. I'm truly, I'm gonna need a Trick Room to be able to win this, because Greninja is one fast fella, and uh, this thing does not even, it's get, but he's got a fucking tongue as a scarf, this thing does not care. Anyway, this thing comes in, it is able to go for an Ice Beam, which does finish off the Umbreon, of course. And at this point, I'm down to two final Pokemon, but it's the exact two that I feel like I need to be able to win this. So, first of all, I go into Yuxi. Now, one of the good things is I'm Focus Sashed, and even though Dark Pulse doesn't kill me here, the thought of a flinch is what is extremely scary. I need to get up this Trick Room. It can go for the Dark Pulse here, man. That's actually not quite going to do half. I do not flinch, which is amazing. And this then allows me to set up that Trick Room, and the dimensions are going to be twisted as hell for the next five turns, which is exactly what we need. So, now Yuxi is actually faster, so what I can do is, rather than go for damage, I decide to go for the Memento. Just because uh, sometimes the Lemon Head got a flex on him like that, I can go ahead and off myself at the cost of reducing that special attack. And now, the Crab is the only hope we have left, but luckily... This thing is quick as shit under the Trick Room, and Edgar gets to come in in pretty epic fashion here. And at this point, uh, Crystallized Crab Boy can just go for the Drain Punch. Luckily, this thing did turn itself to that Ice type. Uh, but the Drain Punch with the Iron Fist is going to be able to take care of it. Down goes the Greninja, who's been scaring the hell out of me all game. And uh, that's going to be the end of the match. So Trick Room is one of the harder strategies to like actually pull off. But when you do pull it off successfully... It feels real nice, especially using Pokemon that you kind of rely on Trick Room like the Crab. Uh, it can be pretty fun, so that was a really good match. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, double check if you are subscribed to the channel, and I do appreciate all the support, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.